Good evening, I'm Greer McGeary, I'm President of Seahorse Victoria. And I'm Colin Hall, I'm currently Secretary of Whitehorse Toastmasters. Colin, welcome. Could you please tell us what Toastmasters is about? Okay, Toastmasters has been around for a long, long time, uh, but it's a really, I would describe it as a do-it-to-yourself program in terms of um, improvement. Uh, it doesn't mean I've improved, but I, I love the people you meet, the stories you hear, and I've found through my working career that the evaluation process is very, very helpful. So it really is about feeling better speaking in public, learning to listen, not that I listen properly yet, but I'm still trying to listen better, and to be able to give people good feedback, positive feedback, uh, and suggestions for how they could be better at what they want to do. So Toastmasters, uh, as you said, it's been around a long time. The it used to be an all-male organisation, I understand. Certainly the club I belonged to certainly was when I joined uh, a long, long time ago. It was all men. And the club went through a, quite an interesting period to, to go from uh, all-male to having female members. It really took it a while to get to that decision. And it was one of the very few remaining clubs at that point. This is the mid-'80s, late-'80s, that uh, were male only. So from your memory of that time in the 80s, uh, what was the impact of having women come into the club, particularly on the, the older members? Well, we lost a couple of members straight away on that decision. A couple of the men decided they didn't want to be in part of it and uh, left. So we probably, I think, lost three members the evening that uh, decision was made. They walked out and never came back. It's all good. <laughs> so makes sense. I don't think that there's really any difference having female members and male members. What I was expecting, perhaps, from my involvement in other clubs prior to us changing from uh, uh, to be a mixed club, was some sort of level of um, joke, innuendo, slight little bit of uh, sexual tension. That's probably not the right way to describe it, but you know, the odd time people would have that interplay. I never really saw that at Toastmasters Whitehorse. Um, it, it really works quite well, and we a few years after that had our first female president. And that. Uh, was accepted very well? The women who joined the club stepped into all the roles that you would expect newer members to step into. So we had people doing the education vice president, which is the person who organises the program, treasury role, secretary, uh, president, as we've already mentioned. Uh, and obviously when you become president, you then become the immediate past president, which means you're still on the executive for the pr next year. So it worked well. The basic premise of tonight's chat, of course, is importance of transgendered people to be able to do things outside the social support. Now, I'm a person who joined um, the club about eight or nine years ago. What I'm interested in from finding out from you is, do you think that had much of an impact on individuals or, and the group as a whole, having a clearly different person who is changing gender? I don't think it did have any impact. I think it probably had impact on individuals and some individuals would have had to adjust their thinking or find either quietly leave the club or I'm sure there was possibly some people for impact. You, Greer, is, you're a particularly confident person and I, and I think the club was uh, in, in, enhanced enormously by your arrival. Uh, you, you stepped into roles, did things, picked up the slack on some things that were going on. So that's been, I think, very, very positive. Toastmasters also is a very diverse uh, organisation in terms of it's, it has all cultures and races mixing in and I think they get on generally fantastic and I think everybody learns from that. There's story, I mean, I go home and wake my wife up every, every Thursday evening up at Toastmasters and tell her the stories because there's, there's always somebody speaking about something I don't know about or it's new and it's different and, and it's been fantastic. I just love the learning. One of the things that I enjoyed about right from the word go that I in joining the club was the accept uh, I felt straight away that there was acceptance in that and that probably even goes to the change from being a male only to a, a mixed uh, gender club but was the impressed with the, the diversity of ethnic background as well as age right. you know so there were clearly younger people in their early 20s through to um, people well into their 70s and mm -hmm. beyond that everyone was there just enjoying themselves to improve themselves and that was a challenge that I found for myself in transitioning is that I needed to do something outside of social support 
as important as social support was, I was looking for something to to challenge myself. And as I did say to one person once, uh, not in our club, but the very first night I went to Toastmasters was meeting the target goal in that I, I was just turned up as Greer and was accepted as Greer and felt that I was always made welcome. I think there was some behind the scene discussion at committee level when I first joined. <laughs> <laughs> the diversity is clearly an aim of what Toastmasters mm. is currently about. So do you recommend it to virtually everyone that you meet? I think we should make compuls uh, Toastmasters compulsory. And I think if we made everybody go to Toastmasters, we wouldn't have some of the problems we have in the world. Uh, it, 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 it takes you to a place, because we all live and have this buffer zone about what we accept in terms of new ideas. This breaks all those rules, it's just there. And, and uh, it's fantastic, I, I really enjoy it because I get ideas I would never have come across in the paper or listened to on the radio because you tend to listen to the same radio station and look at the same paper and that puts a blinker on what you're going to get exposed to. Toastmasters throws it out, everybody's there and, and they have great stories. Every group in the world have a great story to tell. They do and that's been an enjoyable aspect of it is the diversity of stories. Um, one of the things that I, I made a point of personally without necessarily broadcasting it to everyone else was that I was very conscious about not talking about this side of my life openly or in a, in the structure of the organisation because I felt I'm meant to be there purely for the same reason as everyone else and that was what I was trying to achieve. Uh, fortunate in that I'm happy enough to talk to people behind or on the sidelines as it were um, but not, I, I won't give any speeches about being trans or the politics of gender or anything like that because to me it was the organisation allowed me the opportunity just to be there as a person and not as an icon of something <laughs> and, and that's what I've sort of found and it's been wonderful to listen to the different stories, you know, people's travels, um, the you know, climbing to Mount Kilimanjaro or going on as a, an ocean trip, as you said, and it's that benefit that I really got. Uh, and have you overall found the same? Yes, I have. I was just reflecting on while you're framing that question about when you, you've delivered speeches and, and because sometimes you've talked about your past and I have, and I've got to go through the process, I go, that's the past, that's the other past. And I found that somewhat just interesting at times to hear you speak about things that have happened to you in the past and I realise, OK, that was a different time. So, it, 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 look, I think it's fantastic. Thank you, Colin, for uh, joining us tonight in this conversation about uh, the importance of transgender being in the real world, as it were. I'm Greer McGeary. Thank you for watching. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.